Poetry sees the starlight smile of children, Shelley said, seeing this as life's truest wealth. In Shelley's world, the natural order has no place for tyrants. Neutering the beauty of the earth with all its inspirational beings, plants, animals, humans, and elemental presences. He was an atheist of a most particular kind, for his own spirit is ever present in the poetry that he envisioned to be the interpenetration of a diviner nature through our own. He saw this poetry's footsteps as being like those of the wind over the sea, which the coming calm erases, and whose traces remain in the wrinkled sand which paves it. In just such a fashion, Shelley's now etched into the wrinkled neurology of the brain, and he'll rise to the surface in a trice, as the oppressed take up his chant. We are many, they are few. These potent phrases were coined by him after the Peterloo Massacre, where crowds of Manchester demonstrators, protesting against cruel and unfair conditions, were cut down by a Tory government, women and children included. We are many, they are few. Those who've never heard of Shelley know this to be true. True for the 99% who occupied Wall Street to shame the 1% counting their algorithmic wealth in that cold-hearted gully. True for those in Tahrir Square, at the height of the Arab Spring, who adopted this as their slogan. True for the two million who marched against the impending war in Iraq, with Shelley's lines displayed upon their banners. Here's how Byron invoked his dead friend, as he stood beside Shelley's drowned body on the shores of Lurici on the Ligurian coast, to watch its twenty-nine-year-old flesh burning. He was the most gentle, the most amiable, and least worldly-minded person I ever met, disinterested beyond all other men, and possessing a degree of genius, joined to simplicity, as rare as it is admirable. He had formed to himself a beau ideal of all that is fine, high-minded and noble. He acted up to this ideal to the very letter. Shelley devised formulae for man's improvement, poetic equations to enlighten those weighed down by enervating shibboleths. He saw how the great man's comfort equals the poor man's woe, and how war makes small men feel important, and why militarized violence is quite worthless because man has no right to kill his brother. It is no excuse that he does so in uniform. He only adds the infamy of servitude to the crime of murder. Whilst laws passed in Shelley's day are now redundant, consigned to unconsulted vellum scrolls, and whilst the authorities who then held sway are no more than corpse dust in the wind, Shelley's spirit is still legislating for another world that's possible. Government is an evil, Shelley proclaims. When all men are good and wise, government will of itself decay. He then whispers an erotic conjuration. Soul meets soul on lover's lips as this life-lover dances through the ether.